Chapter 19 Genetic Diversity Within Populations Well, can you do this? If you can, then that you have the dominant characteristic or the dominant trait, which means that your genotype is going to be big T, big T, or big T, little t. If you can't, then you're little t, little t. However, variation does exist in populations, and the variation is designed to promote the best chance of the organism's survival. Darwin didn't know how variations are passed on from one generation to the next. It was Mendel that established a link between sexual reproduction and genetic variation. And variation exists in metabolism, a capacity, for example, to live in harsh environments, to be able to digest certain foods and drinks. For example, alcohol dehydrogenase is not really a naturally occurring enzyme, but has been variation that exists more commonly in societies that have alcohol. Societies that have never seen alcohol means the capacity for that enzyme to exist is significantly reduced. Variation exists in fertility. Some organisms will produce certain number of offspring to, to increase their chance of passing on their offspring from one generation to the next. Other organisms, such as flies, for example, or fish, will produce more offspring in order to make the transition to adulthood where they can continue to propagate their species. Variation exists in reproductive method. Whichever system seems to work best for that organism is the one that's used over and over. And variation exists in behavior. An organism is going to behave in a certain way to attract a mate that is going to produce the best chance of that organism's survival, even though some of the behavioral characteristics do vary. Certain genotypes are better equipped for survival, and it's these genes that are transmitted to offspring during sexual reproduction. The gene frequency, or more correctly, the gene allele frequency within a population will increase if the resulting phenotype enhances the organism's fitness. By fitness, I mean their capacity to survive, their reproductive success, and their ability to compete within a population. A gene pool is all of the alleles occurring in a population. Some populations contain some alleles that exist in higher numbers than in other populations. For example, the, red, the allele that codes for red hair may signify Irish descent. Tay-Sex, a neurological condition, is more predominant in Jewish people of Eastern European descent. Geneticists can use allele frequencies to study changes in the human population. Population tends to be characterized by a couple of competing factors. The tendency to want to remain stable. So in order to keep the population in a state of balance or equilibrium. And then the tendency toward variability, the capacity to change, as we discovered in the previous chapter, or evolve. The basic principle of population genetics was derived in 1908, independently by two individuals who came about a mathematical equation to describe population at equilibrium that has since been called the Hardy-Weinberg principle. Basically, it goes along the idea like this. If all other factors remain constant, the gene pool will have the same composition of alleles generation after generation. This stability is called genetic equilibrium, and only if that equilibrium is upset can a population evolve. Let's talk about the Hardy-Weinberg equation itself. The frequency of one of two alleles in a population is expressed as a number between 0 and 1. 0 represents the allele not present in the population, and 1 says that the allele is present in all members of the population. So for example, if an allele for dark fur is present in 70% of the population, the gene frequency for this allele is 0 0.7. It's important to note, however, that if the dark fur is dominant, 70% of the population are going to have the dominant allele, and this means that that 70% population is going to be divided into homozygous dominant and heterozygous. 30% of the population having the recessive allele will mean that the recessive allele is going to be divided into those individuals having homozygous recessive and the heterozygous. So not all 30% are going to be showing the recessive phenotype. 
The Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is this, p squared plus 2pq plus q, q squared equals 1. And you get this equation given to you in your data sheet for the exam. Same with this one, p plus q equals 1. Now, p represents the frequency of allele D. Let's say, for example, allele D represents the dominant allele in a dominant recessive combination. We're not going to assume multiple alleles here. Q represents the frequency of the recessive allele. So when you're talking about P plus Q equals 1, you're talking about the alleles at gene D are made entirely of the dominant allele and the recessive allele. You add up all the dominant alleles and you add up all the recessive alleles and you have all the alleles for that gene in the population. That's the P plus Q equals 1. P squared is the frequency of the homozygous dominant, DD. So if the frequency of the allele big D is squared to give us big D, big D genotype, then that's going to give us the P squared in our Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equation. The 2PQ is the frequency of the heterozygous genotype. Why 2PQ? Well, the big D from the heterozygous genotype could have come from dad and the little d could have come from mom, whereas the other heterozygous genotype says the big d could have come from mom and the little d from dad. So there's two heterozygous genotypes. Remember the Punnett square? And q squared is the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype, little d, little d, p squared for the same reason we have q squared. When you look at the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equation, the p squared 2pq plus q squared means of all the genotypic combinations in a population at the D gene, we're going to have some that are homozygous dominant, some that are homozygous recessive, and some that are heterozygous. We're not going to have any other combinations. So when you add them all together, they equal 100% of the population's genotype at gene D. Now the Hardy-Weinberg equation only works under certain conditions. We call this a population of ideally reproducing, sexually reproducing organisms that are not evolving. You must come under these five positions, and it's important to remember these five conditions. First condition is the population has to be large. This reduces the element of chance. There's no genetic drift or random changes that occur in a small population. If you only have a small population, say of 10 individuals, and two of them just randomly happen to be struck by lightning and killed off, then that significantly affects the allele distribution in that population. That's what genetic drift is. It's the, those small changes in a gene pool due to those chance occurrences. No mutations. We talked about mutations in the previous chapter, and we're assuming there are no mutations occurring here. So there's no formation of alternate alleles at that position. Random mating. Also, no migration. Can't have any immigration or any emigration. This was certainly would affect the allele frequency. And no selective advantage. This is a useful illustration to indicate the effects of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium on a population. If we assume that random mating and no migration and no genetic drift or mutation occurs in a population, and neither is there any natural selection, then the allele frequency as represented by the pie chart there in the ancestral population remains unchanged in later populations. If we can assume that the allele frequency in populations are going to be the same generation after generation, if these effects are in place, then any change in allele frequency means then that there is a disruption in one of the factors that promote the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Here's, a for, here's an example. A condition of non-random mating. So in our ancestral population, we have an equal distribution of alleles. However, the purple alleles seek mates within a population, and that produces an increase in the number of purple individuals. The favored genotypes increase in prevalence. So this is not in equilibrium. On the left, we, in, we show what the ancestral population looks like when we have an equal distribution of alleles. However, the pink and the purples decide to leave the population. And what happens is, is that we have the incidence of those alleles not only becoming rarer, but also the other alleles become more predominant.
a mutation occurs. In this case, some individuals, instead of having the green allele, it becomes the yellow allele. So the green allele starts reducing in later populations in favor of the yellow allele. The ancestral population shows an equal distribution of alleles, but the purple no longer produces fertile offspring, say, for example, due to an environmental change, so the purples start dying off. And the green and the light blue instead start becoming more prevalent. Here's a couple of notes on genetic drift. Changes in the gene pool of a small population due to chance. Chance events play a major role in the microevolution of populations having less than 100 individuals. A couple of situations that occur to most likely cause genetic drift are two conditions that uh, your book talks about, the founder effect and the bottleneck effect. The founder effect is typical of some populations that branch away from an, a European uh, larger population and start setting up their own colony. What happens is, is there are, the individuals that leave don't represent the full array of allele diversity in the major population. And so when they set up their own population, we'll find that it's predominantly those alleles that started up the population. In other words, the new population doesn't have the genetic richness of the ancestral population. Well, the problem is, is that in the, an ancestral population, because of the allelic diversity, we might find that certain genetic conditions are particularly rare. Whereas, if these genetic conditions happen to be a part of the allele distribution in the new population, then once rare conditions are going to become more prevalent. And the bottleneck effect. The allele distribution of years ago is quite diversified. But if you're going to hunt an animal to near extinction, it's going to be to those, up to those cheetahs to repopulate the species. The allelic richness that made up the ancestral population is gone permanently. 